Hi there. So in this video I'm going to look at how Stata's structural equation modeling features can be used as one method for adjusting for uh, measurement error in covariates. Now what I'm going to do is first simulate some data uh, from a large data set and the advantage of simulating a large data set is that we know that the estimates, if they are unbiased, should be close to the true parameter values used to simulate the data. So I've got here a small do file that I've just written to simulate the data. Um, we're first going to clear, set the number of observations to 10,000. We're then going to generate uh, a variable z, which is going to be an error-free covariate in my regression model for my outcome. I'm just going to generate that as coming from a, uh, a random normal with variance 1 and mean 0. Then I'm going to generate the covariate x, which is going to be the covariate measured with error, and I've generated that as equal to 1 plus a half times z plus r normal. The half times z is just to make sure that there's some correlation between x and z to make things a bit more realistic. And x is also going to be, um, it's normally distributed given z, and because z is normally distributed, it, x overall marginally will also be normally distributed. Um, and then we've got y, which is the outcome, and I've... Um, defined y by saying y is 2 times x plus 1 times z plus 2 times a random residual error. So the true coefficient of x in the regression model for our outcome y is 2 and the true coefficient of z is 1 and these coefficients are really the, the primary parameters that we're really interested in estimating. So what we're going to now uh, imagine is a situation where x can't be measured exactly but it can be measured by error-prone measurements. And what I've got here is a first error-prone measurement, W1, and I'm simulating under the classical error model, where W1 is equal to the true value of x, plus a random error with uh, a random error which has a normal distribution, again with variance 1, but it could be something different, of course. And then what quite often happens in studies where covariate measurement error is an issue is that if you're going to make an adjustment for classical error you need to either have some a priori information about the uh, magnitude of the errors or um, some validation data or replication data. Validation data meaning that for some of your participants in the study you know the true value of x uh, and you've also got error prone measurements on them so you can look at the difference between the error prone measurement and x to get an estimate of the magnitude of errors or another situation which we're going to use here is where for a uh, portion of the individuals you make a second error prone measurement of x so w2 here is my second error prone measurement of x same error, error model error distribution and then what i'm doing here is setting w2 back to missing for um, all of the people in my data set except the first 1000 um, so what I'm doing here is, is basically mimicking the situation where a random 10% of the individuals in the, in the study um, have got uh, a second error-prone measurement available. So let's generate the data. Uh, if we fit the model using the true x and, and say it as covariates, then because it's a large data set, we get estimates that are very close to the true parameter values of 2, 1, and, and 0, as we would expect. If we ignore the fact that W1 is an error-prone measurement of x and fit the model with W1 in place of x, then what we see is that we get a large bias towards the null in the coefficient of W1 in place of x. So the true coefficient of x is 2. We've got an estimate of, of basically 1 here, so we've got attenuation towards the null of no effect. But another important thing is that although z is not measured with error, its coefficient is now biased, so its true coefficient was 1, but now we've got an estimate of 1.5. And what's happening here is that because we've simulated x and z to be correlated with each other, positively correlated with each other, and they're both positively correlated with the outcome, when we use w1 in place of x, z is now picking up, the coefficient of z is picking up some of the independent effect of x because this coefficient is now no longer adjusted for x, it's partially adjusted for x, it's adjusted for the error-prone proxy w1. Okay, so now let's drop x to make sure that we don't 
cheat. So in real life we would not have the x, we'd just have the w1s, w2s, z's and y's. And now let's go into Stata's Structural Equation Model Builder. Okay, so um, this is Stata's Structural Equation Model Builder. I'm still learning it, so forgive me for any uh, mistakes that I make along the way. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to put in, this is uh, for observed variables, I'm going to put in an observed variable which is going to be the variable z, the fully observed error-free covariate z. Then we're going to put in the outcome y. So we go here and we select the outcome variable y. And then we're going to draw a path from z, going from z to y. And now state has put in a residual error. This is basically for a regression model of y on z. This is the residual error in that regression. Now what we're going to do is um, construct the measurement error model and there is a, uh, a feature here to um, add a measurement component that, that enables us to um, do this in almost in one go. So the first part of this dialog box, so the latent variable, in our situation now the unobserved covariate x is the latent variable so you can call it whatever you want, let's call it x for consistency with what we were calling things earlier. Now we have to specify the names of the variables in our data set which are measuring x. So we've got w1 and we've got w2 as measurement variables. And this option here we're going to keep ticked which is to not estimate constants in the models for w1 and w2. So now we've got this big box here x is in uh, an ellipse which indicates that it's not observed, it's a latent variable now. x affects w1 and it affects w2. Um, the zeros here are those um, constants that we said we wanted setting to zero, so the intercept here is zero and zero for w1 and w2. There's a number of things that we need to do now though. Um, first we need to put an arrow from x to y because we want to fit a regression model for y with z and x as covariates. We also have to allow for the possibility that x and z are correlated by using this um, add covariance option. We've drawn a line, a double-headed arrow between x and z. But now we need to do a few more things to specify the measurement error model that I'm going to use here. And the first thing is these arrows here, um, so within a structural equation model, this arrow, we can specify a constraint for the factor loading. So in when we generated the data, we generated w1 as equal to x plus u. That's the classical measurement error model. So because the w is equal to 1 times x, I'm going to specify this factor loading as constrained to be 1. And similarly for the second error prone measurement, let's constrain the factor loading to be 1. That's encoding our assumptions about the measurement error model. And then um, the next thing I'm going to do is double click on the x uh, for the latent variable and I want it to estimate the mean of that latent variable x. At the moment we've got these two uh, measurement errors here for w1 and w2. And what I'm going to do is make the assumption that the error variance of the two error prone measurements are the same. And the way that you can do that is if we double click on epsilon 2, we've got error variance here. We can constrain its value either to something numerical, but we don't know what the true error variance is in real life if we had a data set like this. So what you can use is so-called symbolic constraints. So I'm going to write, say, sigma u here. So it's going to estimate a parameter which it's going to label as sigma u and if I now go to epsilon 3 I can type in sigma u as well and that's basically encoding an assumption that the error variance is the same for w1 and for w2. So I think those are all the elements needed. Um, so now what we can do is, is click estimate to, to fit the model. Uh, there are a number of different options. The first option here, maximum likelihood, because we've got in our structural equation model 
um, we've got W2 which is missing for 90% of my data set. If we use the first option, um, Stata would just ignore um, all of the observed data from those 90%. If we use the second option, maximum likely, likelihood with missing values, Stata will use the whole data set, so those individuals where um, just W1, Z and Y are observed, but W2 is missing, it will use um, the information from those individuals, the 90% of, of the study data, which aren't in the replication um, sub-study, and we, want, we obviously want to use um, the data from those 90%. So we're going to use this second option. We click OK. In the background, you can see output going into Stata's output window, um, and then we get estimates here of all of the parameters. So what we've got is you can either look at the output in the output, the standard Stata output window, or you can also see that Stata has now propagated the estimates and or label, put them into the um, put them into the structural equation graph. And if we go through some of these, so we can see four here. This is the estimated variance of the residuals in the Y model, the outcome model. And when we generated the data, we generated it with um, a standard deviation of two. So we've ended up with a, a variance of, of four. The parameters that we're really interested in, the coefficient of X and Z, you can see we've got 2.1 and 0.93, which are quite close to the true values of of 2 and 1. If we want to get confidence intervals for those, if we scroll up to the um, Stata output window, we can see the first part of the output is for the model for Y. You can see the coefficient of Z is 0.93. The confidence interval covers, includes 1. And similarly, the, the coefficient for X, quite close to 2, and the confidence interval includes 2. Um, we can see the estimates of, the, of some of the other parameters here, either there or in the um, structural equation model builder. So, for example, 1.2 is the estimated variance of x, 1.016 the estimated variance of z, 0.52 the estimated covariance between z and x. So that's just an illustration of, of how um, Stata's Structural Equation Builder can be used to adjust for covariate measurement error. We've obviously made a number of assumptions here um, which might uh, or might not be reasonable in any given situation. We've assumed that the um, covariate which is measured with error x is normally distributed here. We've assumed that the measurement errors are normally distributed, and we've assumed that they have the same error variance, although that could potentially be relaxed. And we've also put these factor loadings here of 1 and 1 to encode our assumption that it's classical error, that w is equal to 1 times x plus a random error. There's obviously lots more things that can be done with the Structural Equation Builder, and I'm just learning about those um, at the moment.